Parsha, we read the story of Yaakov. Yaakov is running away from his brother Abraham. And on the way, he stops over and goes to sleep. And we have the famous dream of the ladder with the angels going up and down and God's beautiful promise to Yaakov that he'll watch over him and protect him. But when Yaakov goes to sleep, he didn't have a mattress and he didn't have a pillow. And he didn't have a blanket. So what did he use as a pillow? So the Torah says, He took from the stones of the area, put them underneath his head and went to sleep. When he wakes up, the Torah says, he hears God's great promise and he erects a monument for God to give thanks to God. And what does it say? He took the stone that he put underneath his head and he erected it as a monument. So the question right away is, when he went to sleep, it says he took from the stones, plural, many stones for a pillow. When he woke up, it says he took the stone, one stone. And everyone knows there's a beautiful Rashi. It's a Midrash that says like this, that when Yaakov went to sleep, he took all the stones to go to sleep as a pillow. And the stones started to fight with each other. Each stone said, Allah I want that Tzadik should lay on me. So the stones started fighting. This is what Rashi quotes the Midrash. So what did Hashem do? He made all the stones into one big stone. So like this, there was no more fighting. So when he went to sleep, there were many stones. When he woke up, there was only one stone. It's a beautiful medrash, very lovely. But what's the meaning? There's obviously a deep symbolism here. We're being taught this. There's a reason why we're being taught this. And it shows you how precise the Torah is. It starts with plural, then it goes to singular. This is what happened. So one of the beautiful interpretations is as follows. If you ask yourself the following question, let's say God made it into one big stone, right? But at the end of the day, when Yaakov put his head down on the stone, his head was only laying on one part of the stone. So even though the other pieces of the stone were attached, they became one stone, but the fact still remains, his head was only on one piece of the stone. How did making all the many stones into one stone satisfy the other stones if at the, at the end of the day, his head wasn't on their part of the stone? It's like if you have a big pillow and your head's on one part of the pillow. The other part doesn't get your head, so why were they satisfied? How did that resolve the conflict? And the answer is so beautiful, so simple, and so profound, and so instructive for our lives. You know when you're jealous of the other stones? When you feel detached from the other stones. A lot of times in life, I want to be the head. I'm afraid someone else is the head, which means if I'm not the head, I'm the leg, or I'm something else. So we have all these quarrels, all these fights, power struggles between people and relationships, sometimes in business and family, right? A lot of it's just insecurity that I'm not going to be the head. Someone else is going to take away from my prestige, from my success, from my respect, let's say. But once we become one stone, even if the tzaddik is not on my head, I'm attached to that other part of the stone. So if the tzaddik is on his part of the stone, I'm happy because I'm one with him. If you really feel one and connected to another person, you're never envious of them, you're not jealous, you don't resent them for getting the head because you know you're really one with them. So what they get is what you get because their happiness is your happiness, their success is your success. So instead of friction and fighting, you have unity, oneness, a love, and attachment. And that's the message of the stones merging as one. The more we merge with other people, the more we feel joy for other people rather than jealousy and envy and resentment of other people's success. There's a story I told about long ago in Shul uh, about a- after the Holocaust in the DP camp, there's a great Hasidic Rebbe, his name in 1945, this was the Skolina Rebbe. And in the DP camp, DP camp, after the Holocaust, he managed to get wheat and uh, water, whatever. He made matzahs for Pesach, the first Pesach after the liberation. But he was only able to make a limited supply. So he said everyone who needs could get three matzahs. Whoever has a seder, they need matzahs, he'll give them each three seders. And the Jews came from all over to get matzahs. One of the people who came to get matzahs was the son of the Vizhdan Tzarebi. The Vizhdan Tzarebi's name was uh, Rabbaruch Hager. He sent his son, Ramosha Hager. And he came to get his matzahs. He gave him three matzahs. He said, my father asked if he could get six matzahs. He said, you know, there's not enough for everybody. Uh, I can only give you three. He said, my father begged, he pleaded. He said, please give six for him. He didn't know what to do. He felt he had to give him. He gave him six matzahs. A few hours before Pesach, the son of the Vision Sarebi comes back to the Splinter Rebbe, and he hands him three matzahs. He says, what are you giving me three matzahs? He 
says, you told me your father needed six. Why are you giving me back three? He said, my father wanted me to ask you if you kept three matzahs for yourself. And he said, no, I actually gave out all the matzahs. There were so many Jews who needed matzahs. He says, that's why my father asked for six. He knew you would give away your last matzahs. So he took six. If he give you back, he will pay so three. So you should have three for yourself, for your seder. And this is what it means to feel one with another person. That you're happy for the other person. You think about the other person. And you surely don't resent them. And that's the idea of all the stones merging together.